This year, the Lunar New Year was very close to the Western New Year, so we had two breaks back to back. After spending a little too much money in South Korea, we decided to take a bus to Cambodia. Tickets are around $25 for a one-way from Saigon. After a six-hour ride, we made it to Phnom Penh. Definitely happy to be back here in Cambodia. Hey. Feeling famished, we headed to Basak Lane, a neighborhood packed with restaurants and bars. You can find everything from fancy cocktail bars to food trucks. We stopped for some surprisingly delicious sorriso tacos and margaritas. The following day, we went to the Tools Lang Genocide Museum. An estimated 1.8 million Cambodians were murdered under the rule of Pol Pot between 1976 and 1979. Justice was never served. He died under house arrest in his sleep in 1998. We then went to the factory, a community space filled with arts. The community space aspect of it took a huge hit after COVID, but it's slowly coming back together. Then to the Russian market in a neighborhood called Tultum Boom. We actually used to live here in this area about six years ago. The next day, it was time to head to the islands. We took a two hour minivan to the city of Sianukville, followed by a one hour speed ferry to Korong. There are two islands, Korong and Korong San Leon. Korong is the bigger, more developed party island. Near the dock is the village where you'll find lots of restaurants and cheap hostels. If you keep on walking, you'll find quieter and more beautiful beaches. That is where we stayed, at a place called Starfish Bungalows. All the hotels are on the main road, and Google Maps doesn't work there all the time, so just stick to the main road, or you'll end up wandering through the jungle. We were a bit journeyed out, so we chilled out near the hotel and called it a day. The next day, we hopped on the back of a motorbike for a death-defying 30-minute bike ride. The other side of the island is less developed, and it has pristine beaches. We spent a day there, and then headed back to the other side at night. That night was the actual Lunar New Year celebration. We found a cool little bar that was selling happy cookies. I bought some and we chilled out and watched as people celebrated the New Year. Come to Korong, or well, we still don't know about Korong San Leon, but I'm pretty sure it's probably gonna be the same thing. Remember to bring cash uh, because there are no ATMs and no one takes a card. Well, most of the island doesn't take the card. There are some places that do take cards. Two places on the island that take cards. So yeah, bring cash. The next day was our last day in Korong. We found a place that had a whole glamping situation going on. They also had a pretty good selection of wine. We decided to chill and hang out there. That evening, we walked along the beach and got some dinner. The next day, it was time to go to Korong San Leon. We hopped on a fishing boat for about 20 minutes until we made it to the quieter, smaller island. We spent the first night at our hotel where we met some new friends and had some drinks. The next day, we walked to the other side of the island. A large road is being built, which is useful, but it makes it much hotter if you're walking. On our walk, we met Betty, who is a baker from the Netherlands, visiting for a few weeks. The road can get confusing at times if you miss a sign, so it's better to walk with a friend, especially at night. We walked until we made it to a beach called Lazy Beach, where we hung out and caught the sunset. On our last full day, the water was pretty choppy, Boats were not coming in or leaving that day. We walked around the island where you can see some of the abandoned resorts that closed down after COVID. The next day, we headed back to Phnom Penh for one last night. Cambodia has a vibrant gay scene from bars to clothing optional hotels. And although some bars shut down due to COVID, our favorites remain. Make sure to check out Space Hair for its incredibly friendly staff and good drinks. Then, don't miss out on the drag show at Blue Chili. Cambodia will forever be one of my favorite countries to visit. It has a rich history, the people are nice, and it's super gay friendly. Definitely visit Cambodia if you find yourself in Southeast Asia. This is Eduardo Kulbo.